Well, good morning again. It's Mr. Nelson. It's Monday, April 6th, and we're going to derive the wave speed equation. We're going to apply it to graphs. Uh, you'll see a sample problem. And I just want to remind you, last week you guys had been studying uh, simple harmonic motion and graphs of waves, and you've been looking at period uh, versus time, period being the time for one wave, which we are going to denote with a capital T. Uh, the time interval, the total time, is just lowercase t. So there's a little distinction. They're both units of time, uh, measures of time and units of seconds, but capital T will be period. Frequency f is in units of hertz, how many cycles per second. And the amplitude is sort of the height of the wave. And um, you can use different units for amplitude. Uh, but just a quick reminder that frequency and period have this sort of reciprocal relationship. So if you know frequency, you can easily determine the period and vice versa. If you know the period of a wave, you can easily determine the frequency of the wave. And this was all from last week as you studied waves. Um, and when we graphed a wave, we observed uh, graphs of amplitude uh, versus uh, time or period on the x-axis. And now you'll, you're going to notice we're, we're not going to look at the amplitude versus the, uh, uh, the time or period of the wave. We're going to look at the amplitude versus the length of the wave, how long a wave is, uh, a distance unit. And that, that the distance in which a wave, uh, the length of one wave, is referred to as wavelength. And so I haven't been using this uh, yet in graphs. You've just been reading about it. And uh, the graphs look the same. But if you measure the distance from one wave crest to the next successive wave crest, uh, we're going to denote that distance with the Greek character, this is pronounced lambda, L-A-M-B-D-A, lambda. And the distance between successive crests of a wave or successive troughs of a wave is called wavelength, lambda. So if uh, a crest occurred at the one meter mark and the next crest occurred at the five meter mark from one to five, that's a distance of four meters. If a trough occurred at the three meter mark and the next successive trough occurred at the seven meter mark, again, you have a, a length, that's that unit of distance from successive troughs, of approximately 4 meters. So in this problem, you're going to see wavelength is about 4 meters. Now the last graphs, we were measuring the time between successive crests. Uh, and we were referring to that as period, how much time it took for one wave to pass to the next wave crest and so forth. So Lambda represents wavelength, and all sample problems you're going to see here are using wavelength. Um, and I want to quickly derive the equation. Okay, very simple. You guys have already learned that speed um, can be measured as a unit of distance over time. That would be a Speed would be a unit of uh, units of meters per second. If we had distance in meters, time in seconds. Now, if it's a wave, uh, we call this wavelength. So the length of one wave or the distance of one wave is wavelength in meters. And the time is called period. <clears throat> and that's in seconds. So again, instead of saying distance over time, we're saying wavelength. Uh, so I spelled that wrong, wavelength over period. And that's still meters per second. So you could say uh, uh, distance over time. And again, instead of calling this speed, we're just going to, we're going to refer to it as the velocity, okay? Um, which would be wavelength lambda over period, capital T, okay? But we also learned that the... Uh, frequency of a wave is 1 over the period. So you could say wavelength lambda over period is the speed of a wave, but you could also say, since 1 over period is frequency, frequency times wavelength. That's all in units of meters per second if you're using your SI units, simply because of where this substitution. 
frequency for one over period. And typically in the problems you'll see in your book, we'll say the speed of a wave V is equal to F lambda. This is what's commonly referred to as the wave speed equation. And it's simply derived from learning what you've already known about speed. Uh, I'm going to give you a, a quick sample problem if we go back to our original notes. We actually don't have enough information to figure out the speed of this wave because we only know the wavelength. We don't know the period of the frequency. But if you were given the period of the frequency, you could figure out the speed of the wave. Um, looking at this graph, you could determine the wavelength is 4 meters. You could determine the height of the wave. How much it rises to each crest is 3 meters above or it falls 3 meters below. So the amplitude in this problem is 3 meters. See, we're measuring the units of meters. But if I were to give you the period of this wave or the frequency of this wave, you could figure out the speed at which it's traveling. And that's what we're going to do for our warm-up problem. Okay, so here you are. This is a five-step problem. I'm going to ask you uh, in your notes to determine some values based on this graph. If you look at the graph of this wave, uh, you can see where it starts. It rises to a crest. It falls back down to a crest. comes back to its starting point. Rises to a crest. Falls back down to a trough. Again, over a distance of 40 meters. You can see how high it rises, its amplitude in meters, how far it falls. And let's just assume this is an ocean wave. Let's say this is like, you know, um, each crest peaks at four meters height here, you could see. And this is an ocean wave that's being graphed, and each wave crest rolls into the shore. So let's say it's kind of crashing into the shore right here. So maybe, you know, We imagine this wave is moving from left to right. It's crashing into the shore every four seconds. So if each crest passes every four seconds, that's its period. And given that information, if you could imagine this wave rolling horizontally to the right uh, with a period of four seconds, you could figure out its amplitude from the graph. You could figure out its wavelength. You can count how many waves are graphed. How many waves do you see here? Uh, you can determine the frequency to which this wave is uh, passing, how many waves occur each second. And then you can determine the wave speed. Post your answers, uh, numbered 1 through 5, with units, and I will reply.